Vaping is a common term for electronic cigarette use. Different chemicals, either retail manufactured or street manufactured, are heated to very high temperatures creating a vapor, thus you get the phrase vaping, and they're inhaled into the lungs. Once inhaled, those materials go directly into the bloodstream after coming into contact with the small airways. There are multiple compounds that are associated in the products that the people are vaping and smoking. So nicotine is one part, but in the manufacturer products, the nicotine is dissolved in chemicals that can cause injury to the lungs. And more concerning with the acute lung injury may be the association with synthetic pop, also known as cannabinoids and THC. There are several health concerns related to electronic cigarette use and vaping. They're not well studied because this isn't a regulated product, but several concerns are around not only the chemicals that are added to the solution, such as nicotine or marijuana, but what those other chemicals do at very high temperatures when they get into the lung. That is poorly understood. Right now, we still have ongoing concerns about the addictive potentials of nicotine and also what it's doing to your other tissues, importantly your brain. There's multiple health concerns with vaping products. Obviously, the long-term issues that have been associated with nicotine products and addiction, and more acutely, we're concerned about the acute lung injury, which is resulting in hospitalizations, severe lung damage, and death. This has been pretty notable in the news that several hundred people have had this acute event in recent months. The symptoms that can be associated with acute lung injury can be shortness of breath, Exertional issues, we are more short of breath than usual around an activity, a persistent dry cough, chest tightness or chest pain. And if the children are experiencing those symptoms, then they should seek medical assistance as soon as possible. People often ask the question about vaping or electronic cigarette use as a safe alternative to smoking cigarettes or as a mode of quitting cigarettes. We don't have any good long-term data to suggest that use of these products is safe or that it reduces your risk of disease related to chronic nicotine addiction. We need more information, but right now we have to assume that any level of nicotine use is going to continue to be highly addictive, and the best way to quit is to never start. If the children have been using nicotine products for a long period of time, it is possible that they're addicted and may need more intervention with nicotine supplements or counseling but hopefully the best prevention is not starting and educating the children about the dangers of the activity. So many people come in and ask us how to quit smoking or how to get help with stopping their habits with either tobacco or electronic cigarettes. They ask because they care about their lung health or the lung health of someone that they love. We care too. We don't want people to feel like they're failing or facing this alone. Some people have failed resources at home and don't know where to turn. In our primary care offices and behavioral health programs, we have resources to help people who are dealing with all types of addiction, not just tobacco and nicotine, but also in the pulmonary division, we have many providers that are able to work with patients through a freedom from nicotine and tobacco dependence.